scrambled eggs can turn green, chips can burn like paper, and oats can jump up by themselves. No, this video is not about food coming to life. These are new experiments in our food laboratory, which are easy to do in your own kitchen. Wow, Professor Yum Yum has brought something to eat at last. Okay, little egg, come to me. But the professor takes away my potential lunch. She needs it for her experiments. The problem is to have an egg stand vertically. It isn't solved yet. Miss Glutton tries to do it and accidentally spills salt. The professor's angry. Spilling salt is a bad sign, but her laboratory assistant shows it's not. She puts the egg on top of the salt and it keeps standing vertically. Sometimes scientific discoveries happen by accident. The egg doesn't fall even if you blow at it. It's amazing! The salt's been blown off while the egg keeps standing. Miss Glutton's lapsed back into her old ways with getting all test objects into her mouth. While the professor is busy with her science experiments, she's going to bite an orange together with the peel. You should wash it before eating it at least. Take this cylinder full of water. Submerge an orange into the water. It floats. The laboratory assistant removes it from the water and tries to bite it again. What are you doing? Peel it first. Miss Glutton peels the orange and tosses it into the water. It's magic! The peeled orange sinks. It splashes water on the professor's glasses. Okay, her revenge will be quick. She'll eat it. Miss Glutton's going to make coffee, but forgets a kettle in the kitchen. The professor wants to drink her cola, but she doesn't notice there's coffee powder on the bottom of the cup. We've got an accidental experiment. Put on your rubber gloves. Put coffee powder into a cup. Pour in some cola. Watch the reaction. The liquid's frothing and increasing in size. We hope it won't explode. If there appears a new life in the substance, the professor will carefully write down the results. I like cola experiments. It isn't for drinking, it's for science. Pour cola into a glass. Add some milk. How should I come to it? Is it going to burst out? Will the glass break? Okay. Who wants to risk drinking the cola and milk cocktail? Carefully pour milk into the glass. Just have a look. The milk curdles and turns into solid flakes. After a while, the solid stuff appears on the bottom and the cola loses its color. There's no winner in this battle of liquids. Yes, science makes everything clear like milk does cola. Student, get ready. I'm going to show you an entertaining science experiment. I'll pick up an ice cube using a thin thread. Well, it isn't ready yet. Okay, I know a trick. Touch an ice cube with a thread. It doesn't react anyhow. Sprinkle the ice with some salt. The thread sticks to the ice cube, holding it tightly. You can lift the cube easily. Abracadabra! I'm holding an ice cube using a thin thread. Don't touch it, it's fragile. The young student suggests doing another experiment. She takes milk and food coloring. Pour some milk onto a plate. Add different colorings. Apply liquid soap on a Q-tip and dip it into the milk. The coloring creates intricate patterns. The plate looks like it's alive. It's true magic! You can never stop watching these transitions of colors. These awesome experiments will make it possible for the student to get the Nobel Prize. Keep it up! And what should you do when a red cabbage suddenly falls into your hands from nowhere? Right you are! Squeeze blue juice out of it. Chop red cabbage. Cover it with water and boil. Strain off blue liquid. We've got excellent sapphire nectar. It is exactly what we need to color boring scrambled eggs. Take two eggs and separate the whites from the yolks. Whip up the whites and add the cabbage liquid to the whipped whites. Mix it nicely. The whites turn green. What way can we fry the scrambled eggs? There's no gas stove in the lab due to safety reasons, but Cherry knows an experiment with chips. Put chips into a plate and ignite them carefully following the fire prevention rules. They burn just as well as paper. 
You can easily fry the eggs above the fire. Pour some vegetable oil into a frying pan and add the green whites. Put the yolks on top carefully. The green fried eggs look weird. Anyway, take a knife and a fork and enjoy your meal. Bon appetit! We've invented a simple breakfast formula. Chips plus a lighter equals fire. And eggs plus a red cabbage equals green scrambled eggs. Professor Yum Yum is going to have a portion of her traditional oatmeal. She goes out to take a kettle. And Cherry is doing her electrifying experiments with a balloon. It accidentally drops into a plate with oat flakes and we can witness an unexpected discovery. Put oat flakes into a plate. Blow up a balloon and electrify it. You can do it by rubbing it in wool mittens. The balloons turn electrified. Now put it closer to the flakes and watch the flakes jumping funnily as though they are alive. Professor Yum Yum comes back. We've proved that oat flakes are very healthy and full of energy. They keep jumping out of the plate by themselves. Why are there so many beverage cans in the lab? Are you going to build a can pyramid? Or to train balancing skills? Or to do cheek massage? But Cherry has thought out another cool experiment. She takes out a gigantic king-size flask and fills it with water. Why is it so much? Does she actually want to take a bath? Nope, it's a sinking can experiment. Toss the cans into water one by one. Fanta sinks at once. But a can of Coca-Cola doesn't sink for some unknown reason. Is it magic or science? The thing is that it's a Diet Coke. It contains no sugar, so it keeps floating. Schweppes sinks too, but Sprite doesn't sink at once because of an air bubble left in the bottom indentation. The water experiment proves that diet drinks are the lightest. Professor Yum Yum has taken up a whole plate of unhealthy food. Doesn't she understand how badly it can influence her stomach? She obviously starts feeling sick after a lunch like this. But Cherry has warned her about it. To prove that she was right, Cherry performs an iodine experiment. Peel a potato and cut it in half. It is necessary to put on rubber gloves. Dip a Q-tip into iodine and run it on the potato. The vegetable has changed its color. This is a chemical reaction of the starch contained in the potato with iodine. It turns blue or black depending on the amount of starch. The more the starch, the darker the potato gets. You can check the amount of starch in other favorite unhealthy food products in the same way. Drop some iodine on cheese bread, crab sticks, sausage, mayonnaise, and bread. As the experiment shows, all these products contain a large amount of starch. In this experimental way, we've found out which products are iodioxic. Now, Professor Yum Yum will think twice before getting them for her lunch. Who needs to eat so much starch? I'm doing an experiment and Professor Yum Yum keeps sticking her nose into my business. Oops! She drops her Oreo into my liquid nitrogen. Let's see what will happen to it. Put an Oreo into liquid nitrogen. You can take out a hard cookie covered with frost in a moment. If you hit it, it breaks into crumbs. To maintain the integrity of the experiment, Professor Yum Yum drops another cookie into the liquid nitrogen. There you go! Now there is an Oreo floating in my experiment. I take the cookie out. It gets frozen right away as expected. Take your frozen cookie back and stop spoiling my experiment. Professor Yum Yum is going to eat Nutella in peace and quiet. That is not happening. Her assistant has no mercy. No product escapes from the nitrogen experiment. Put a teaspoon of Nutella into liquid nitrogen. The chocolate spread turns into a hard mass in a few seconds. Nutella gets completely hard. Now it's a chocolate candy, except that it is frozen. Take care of your tongue. Melissa brings donuts. But she doesn't expect that Professor will sacrifice her donut to science. Pour liquid nitrogen onto the donut. It immediately gets covered with an icy crust. While Professor takes a close look at her donut, 
I enjoy eating my sweet and warm one, and Professor Yum Yum can't even break her experimental donut to see if the filling is frozen. It's time for a coffee break! Add whipped cream! But Melissa is going to add it not only into coffee, but into liquid nitrogen too! Let's see what we will get! Squeeze whipped cream into a container with liquid nitrogen. It hardens and becomes fragile, like meringue. Our scientists have been wrestling with this experiment for a long time. What have we got? Hmm, it looks like meringue. Melissa eats it like dessert, and Professor drops it into her cup of coffee. It used to be a regular coffee with cream, and now it's become a cool mochaccino. Hmm, tasty! And don't forget to give your thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel and click the bell so that you don't miss the most amazing experiments in the Troom Troom Lab.